Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new session of HPP Innovation Week, titled Basic Principles of HPP Packaging. My name is Cristina Perez, Communication and Marketing Manager at Hyperbaric. With this session, we'll start a new block of contents, this time focus on packaging. Packaging is one of the key factors in having a successful HPP product. The benefits of HPP will not be possible without the perfect HPP packaging concepts. High pressure processing is traditionally an impact technology, meaning that the products are processed in their final package. A suitable packaging is essential to protect the product against oxidation, contamination, and other sterile agents. And now we are going to listen to the Dr. Rui Queiroz. Rui, welcome. Hi, Christina. Hi, everyone. Hi, uh, he's an applications and food uh, processing specialist at Hyperbaric, where he provides technical uh, scientific support to clients as well as participates in R&D projects related to high pressure processing. In this session, we will learn more about the basic HPP packaging concepts, uh, the different types of uh, compatible packaging and silent best practices. Remember that you can use our live chat to leave all your doubts and questions that we will answer. And now let's go with the session. Re, whenever you want, you can share your screen with us. Okay. Are you seeing my screen? Yes, perfect. Okay. So thank you, Christina, for the for the introduction. And hello, everyone. As Christina said, my name is Rui Queiroz, and I am part of the applications team here at uh, Hyperbaric. And today I will be talking a little bit about the basic basic principles of packaging for HPP. Uh, well, packaging is a crucial factor for the success of any HPP product. Uh, so, in this presentation, uh, I will discuss some important aspects to consider when choosing a packaging design, uh, talk about the most suitable materials, and give you some overall uh, recommendations. Uh, so, as, as I said, the, the packaging is a key factor in the development process of any HPP product. Uh, on one hand, good packaging can help extend the, the shelf life of the product, and it may even help to prevent damage and contaminations. Uh, furthermore, uh, a good design can be attractive, inform, and allow the consumer to easily identify the problem, the, the problem, the product. Sorry, uh, but on the other hand, uh, bad packaging can lead to to incidents and consequent food safety problems, uh, or it can even lead to to a product recall, which can which can damage the the brand reputation. Also, it can lead to a loss of confidence in the technology, which isn't good for uh, for anybody. Uh, before talking about the packaging itself, uh, it's important to have a couple of things in mind. Uh, well, one is that HPP uses hydrostatic pressure, uh, which, which means uh, that pressure is applied instantly and uh, uniformly throughout the vessel. Uh, this allows to, to process any product, regardless the shape or size of, of its packaging. Still, it's important to know that the geometry of the packaging uh, may limit how much product can be placed in the HPP unit. Uh, another thing to consider is that uh, products compress under pressure. Uh, for instance, at uh, 600 megapascal, uh, water compresses about 50%, uh, which means that uh, its volume will decrease around 50% uh, when under pressure. Uh, then upon the compression, uh, it returns to orig its original volume. But this means that most products will reduce their volume uh, under pressure and that the packaging must be able to adjust to this volume reduction. Uh, therefore, 15% uh, should be the minimum compression value that uh, packaging materials should withstand uh, under pressure. And an additional 5 to 10% of compressibility is recommended to compensate for the collapse of the gas in the head space. Uh, so, in general, packaging for HPP must meet three conditions to, to withstand pressure and ensure product safety. One, it must be flexible uh, to resist the compression and volume reduction, uh, so it cannot be rigid like glass. Uh, two, it must be elastic, uh, as it needs to recover its uh, shape after the compression, uh, which is usually not the case of metal. Uh, and another reason why metallic packaging is not recommended for HPP uh, is that metal may scratch the, the inside of the high pressure vessel and damage. The, the third condition is that the packaging must be waterproof. 
uh, well, because the, the pressure is transmitted uh, using water. Uh, therefore, carton packaging is also not, not suitable. Uh, so wh what is suitable for, for HPP? Uh, well, most HPP packaging is based on plastic polymers, as these materials are flexible, so they can withstand pressure without breaking. Uh, elastic, so they recover their shape upon the, the release of pressure, and uh, waterproof to, to prevent water from contacting the, the food product. Uh, so plastics are the most suitable material for, for HPP. Uh, in this table, we can see the most common plastics used for different types of packaging. Uh, the most common are PET, high density polyethylene or polypropylene. Uh, and it is, it is important to mention that current HPP commercial conditions uh, up to 600 megapascal and between 4 and 25 Celsius de degrees Celsius uh, do not modify covalent bonds and thus do not affect the, the chemical structure of plastic polymers. Uh, nonetheless, uh, pressure can reduce the void spaces within the material structures uh, and sometimes slightly improve the gas barrier properties of that material. Uh, regarding the format, uh, it is possible to use bottles, pouches, cups, trays, uh, among many others. Um, although the packaging does not improve the HPP microbial inactivation, it can help slow down the microbial recovery during storage. Uh, this if the gas barrier properties are good enough. Uh, starting with bottles, uh, PET bottles are the most common choice. Uh, this is mostly due to its good mechanical properties, transparency, and having a good uh, gas barrier. Uh, the PET bottle combined with a high density polyethylene cap is uh, usually a common and good combination. Uh, this is because both materials have a different compressibility, uh, which provides a tighter seal. Also, the design of the bottle may influence its resistance to pressure, uh, so it should have rounded corners, uh, as these are subjected to less strain, and an inverted dome base also helps with, uh, with pressure resistance. Uh, the headspace should be minimized to reduce the amount of oxygen and thus reduce undesired chemical and enzymatic reactions. Uh, and also having less air uh, minimizes paneling, as we will see later in, the, in this presentation. Uh, in terms of cap design, uh, the use of plug seals are the better choice. Uh, this is because the, the inner lips provide an extra barrier uh, that prevents fluid exchange during, during high pressure. Uh, an induction seal may also work. Uh, however, the capping should be done after processing uh, because they are trapped in the space between the seal and the cap may be a cause for, for failure. And also because uh, water can remain between the cap and the seal, uh, well, because it's, it's an area that is hard to dry, which can lead to the growth of mold later. Uh, in the case of liners, the, the differences in the material mechanical properties like compressibility and elasticity uh, may risk the, the seal integrity, uh, which results in the in failure of the seal. And similarly, uh, foil closures are also like to, likely to fail. Uh, we are now seeing that carbonated be beverages are a novel category in the, in the HPP industry. Um, for this type of drink, some additional aspects for the bottle should be considered. Uh, usually they have a smaller opening than conventional HPP bottles, uh, and they should have a crown-shaped base to provide additional structural support. Uh, also, the, the thread of the neck of the bottle uh, and the cap should be discontinuous um, to let the pressurized gas escape while opening the bottle, basically to avoid the cap from popping out when opening. Uh, like I've mentioned before, the geometry of the bottle does not affect the efficiency of HPP. Uh, still, uh, it is very important as it affects the filling ratio of the machine. Uh, since HPP is a batch project uh, process, the filling efficiency is an essential parameter for the productivity, and it affects the cost per liter of, uh, of, uh, of the product. Uh, so, in a general way, round-shaped bottles have a slightly lower filling ratio than square ones uh, that usually have a filling ratio of around 45 to 50%. Other shapes may also be used, such as hexagonal bottles, for example, that slightly improve the, the filling ratio of the vessel. Uh, bottles can even be designed specially to optimize the, the filling ratio, uh, as you can see in the examples in the pictures on the right, uh, reaching filling efficiencies up to 70%. 
Uh, moving on to topologies, uh, this can be compatible with uh, with HPP and are broadly used, uh, particularly for fruit and vegetable purees intended for for infants. Uh, a ceiling area of at least five millimeters is recommended for the lateral sides, uh, while fittings must avoid creating air pockets and need to be rigid. Uh, including a metal layer within the polymeric uh, plastics may improve the gas barrier properties and also prevent slight exposure. Uh, although some laminated aluminium options may work for HPP, uh, these are usually not, uh, not recommended. Uh, this is because plastic and metal, metal layers uh, often compress and recover their shape at different rates, uh, which may lead to delamination. Uh, so it is a better option to include it bonded in a plastic film. Uh, as for cups, uh, they are a very popular type of packaging. Uh, however, they are one of the most uh, challenging. Um, the snap leads do not provide sufficient sealing uh, to prevent water from entering the cup during HPP. Uh, so plastic film must be heat sealed to, to cover the container opening before processing. Uh, so the, the lid should be placed on the cup after HPP, uh, similar to what I said for bottles with induction seals. Uh, also similar to bottles, uh, the cup should have rounded corners, corners as the pressure is better distributed throughout the cup when compared to sharp corners. Uh, additionally, uh, it is less likely that the rounded corners uh, puncture the film of adjacent cups during HPP or, handling op or other handling operations. Uh, rigid or semi-rigid uh, cups may also be used for HPP, uh, although the film should compensate for the lacks of, lack of flexibility of the rigid container. Basically, you'll need a more flexible film. Uh, the cup should also have rigid sealing flanges uh, with at least uh, 5 millimeters, as this allows for a strong seal and slows down uh, gas migration across the, the sealing area. Uh, now let's talk about some common issues and let's start with paneling. Uh, paneling is a common problem uh, that is triggered by the pressure difference between the inside and the outside of the bottle and common causes of paneling include the, the migration of gas from the head space into the liquid, the gas exchange between the outside and inside of the bottle, uh, depletion of the head space gas due to ongoing reactions such as oxidation, uh, and the condensation of the vapor phase after cooling uh, hot filled beverages. Uh, so to mention some potential solutions, the addition of nitrogen removes oxygen and increases internal pressure, uh, which allows to achieve an equilibrium between the inside and, and outside. Uh, also, also increasing the thickness of the bottle wall may reduce paneling, but it's not always effective. Alternatively, uh, including some circular ridges or ribs along the bottle uh, may improve resistance to, to paneling. Uh, one of the most common issues in cups uh, is the excessive amount of gas present in the packaging. Uh, in these cases, the, the total amount of gas must be considered. I mean, both the gas in the head space and the gas trapped in the product. Uh, as I said before, gas is highly compressible, which leads to a big volume reduction under pressure. Uh, so, when there is too much gas, uh, the stress of, on the packaging will be higher, which often leads to packaging or seal failure. Well, and this is the most direct pro problem, uh, because there are some secondary issues when the packaging has too much gas. Namely, cycles are slower and there is an increased wear of the, of the machine parts. Uh, this, this, this is because the high pressure pumps need to work more to, to compress the air. And, and also, the filling ratio of the vessel decreases. And all of this leads to an overall lower productivity. Uh, as, uh, as we have seen, uh, gas trapped within the food structure compresses with pressure and expands during decompression. Usually, when the gas expands, it migrates very quickly from the product to the, to the headspace, and so changing the texture and volume of the product. Uh, this big compression and decompression uh, also often results in severe deformation of the packaging and the appearance of wrinkles. Other effects caused by the expansion of, uh, of gas include the delamination of, uh, of the packaging, the formation of blisters or bubbles, uh, and, the common, and what is common also is the appearance of white spots in both the packaging and the product. Uh, still, if no major packaging issues occur, uh, these white spots may eventually disappear uh, once the remaining gas in the product migrates into the, the space. 
Uh, in addition to the white spots, a uh, common issue is the formation of cavities in the in the more solid foods such as uh, sausages. Sausages. The the origin of the problem <clears throat> is the same: uh, gas trapped within the food structure compresses with pressure and expands uh, during the compression, resulting in a hollow matrix. So, in conclusion, it's not very good to have high amounts of air in packaging for for HPP, regardless the the food product. Uh, with this, I end the, this presentation that I hope that uh, you have enjoyed. Uh, if you have any questions about HPP packaging or any other application, uh, feel free to contact us through the email apps at hyperbaric.com. And uh, thank you for the, the attention. Thank you, Rui, for this great talk on packaging. I'm sure our viewers found it very interesting. Uh, let's get started with the questions. Uh, I choose these two questions. Okay. First, uh, what are the minimum and maximum amount of air recommended for a bottle of or a cup? Uh, well, for a minimum, there isn't exactly a minimum. The, the less air you have uh, is better. So if you have to put a minimum, zero. <laughs> uh, that would be perfect. So as a general rule, the less air you have, the better uh, for any kind of product or packaging. Uh, for, uh, for the maximum, for bottles or cups, usually if you go with 7 or 8%, of ad space, you should have no no problems, and it should work for most applications. Mm -hmm. Perfect, Rui. And finally, Rui, uh, if the format uh, or size of the packaging is changed, do the ATP conditions need to be um, adjusted? Um, no, no, not really, uh, because. Uh, HPP uses isostatic pressure, uh, which means that the pressure is applied uh, equally and instantly throughout all the product, regardless its size or, uh, or shape. So if you have uh, certain HPP conditions for, uh, let's say, 50 milliliter bottle, uh, if you change it to one, uh, one liter bottle, the each pressure conditions will, will be the same. You can even use uh, the same cycle and place it uh, two different sizes of bottles in the same cycle that uh, it won't affect the efficiency of, of HPP. So no, you don't need to, to adjust the conditions if you change the format size of, of the this format of the size of the packaging, sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rui, thank you very much. And for all our assistants, uh, we hope you enjoy all the sessions in the rest of the day. Uh, we will continue to talk about packaging with other experts. Uh, thank you, Rui. Thank you, everybody. And goodbye. Bye.